Okay, so the first thing you want to do is break the lug nuts loose. And um, on some of these, you have to get a screwdriver in here and just kind of pry forward to get the lug nuts exposed. If you have bullet wheels or Cobra wheels or whatnot, you may not have to deal with that. So then you'll take a 13 16 socket and just come and break these loose. And you're not taking them off all the way, but just while the car has the weight on the wheels, it just helps to break them loose. So you want to chalk the front wheels. So you'll want to lift the rear of the car in the air and it's likely you'll be doing both sides at the same time. So you can either just do one side at a time or like we're doing here, you can lift here on the torque box. You'll see where it just flattens out and you can put a jack. Then on the other side, you'll go ahead and put a jack stand under the same torque box. Then if you want to, there's plenty of places to secure the other jack stand. You can put one right on that axle tube that comes through there, just as a backup in case something falls. And that's how I'll be doing this one. I'll just leave the jack supporting the car basically that way with this jack as a backup. But uh, then once the rear wheels are in the air, you can continue to take those lug nuts off. And with all the lug nuts off, go ahead and just pull the wheels straight back to remove it. And now you have your rotor and your brake caliper. So now we're going to go after two of the 15 millimeter bolts on the back. There's this one right here. And then there's this one down here. See that? Um, basically these two bolts hold the brake caliper on. So if you want, you can take some liquid wrench if you have a lot of rust or if the car is kind of older and let these uh, bolts soak for a minute. Then just take your 15 millimeter uh, breaker bar and you're gonna wanna turn it counterclockwise. So remember when you're looking at this, you're actually looking at the bolt backwards here. So to break it loose, you're gonna be turning it this way, which would look like it's clockwise, but that's because you're on the back of the bolt. So anyway, turn it that way to break it free. Okay, so we're breaking that one loose and we'll do it on the bottom one too. Okay, so you'll notice it's hard to get a socket onto this lower bolt because you have the parking brake cable that comes through here. So an easy way around this is just to remove this cable and uh, all you have to do is get a pair of pliers. Lock, uh, I like these locking vice grips because it helps. But you're going to want to unravel it. So if you can see here, we're just pulling on it and then unhitching it from its connector. Then we're just going to take out this little clip here. So you just grab a screwdriver. And it's just a little... C clip, as you can see, that comes out. Now you can just yank this cable all the way out. So now we have plenty of access to get onto our lower bolt. So when you take one of these sides out, the other side will be very easy to take out after that because the two cables on each uh, rotor basically they meet together at a Y at the front. So once you have one off, then the other one will be really loose. So next, we're just going after this 15 millimeter bolt that's on the back here, and we're turning it counterclockwise. Okay, so we're taking our bottom bolt out and then our top bolt here. Then you can slide the caliper off of the rotor. Sometimes what will happen is the rotor will eat down so much that there's a lip here and it's hard to get this off of it, but uh, you should be able to pry it off. Okay, now you want to set this on a bucket or something so that it's not hanging by the cable. So sometimes you'll find one small washer from the factory that they put on to hold the brake uh, rotor in place. A lot of times they're missing like this if the brakes have ever been changed before for any reason, but you would just take that off and then remove the rotor. Okay, so 
over time as your brakes wear down, uh, you may look under the hood and find that the fluid level has gone down since there requires more fluid in the lines with less brake rotor pad. So sometimes people will overfill this as they see that it's low. But anyway, we're going to be compressing the calipers back in. So you want to pop this lid off so, and that will allow pressure to escape from here. If you don't do this, and you compress those rotors, you can blow this cap off or cause some other damage. So you wanna pop the lid off of this and just set it aside. So our next step is gonna to be to separate the caliper. As over time it's worn down, it's gotten smaller and smaller. We need to spread it back out to fit the new pads and the new rotor on. However, the rear brakes are different than the front where you have to turn this in a clockwise way to compress the piston. So um, if you've done the front brakes, don't think it's just like that or, you, or you'll mess up the caliper. So basically to get these pads off, you just push completely away from you and they will slide off. And the same with the top one. If you do use a screwdriver like this, just be careful not to ruin the, the boot that's behind this and you'll see it in a minute. But you basically just pop these out now this is the section right here that's going to be compressed and it has a very special tool that you put on it. On my sister's F-150 I was actually able just to turn it by hand but um, you're going to put a tool on this that spins it and so that's what will allow it to go back in as it has to be turning as it's being pushed back in. Okay so this is the special tool that you can rent from the auto parts store for free. Um, and basically the way it works is you lock one of these pads onto it. It's magnetic, so it just holds it in place. And so what this piece is doing is locking into the two grooves that are on this piston. And then as you turn it clockwise, if I can show you here. So you lock it in there, and then as you turn it clockwise, it will compress that piston back in. Now remember to have, uh, as we showed, make sure that you have the cap off of the um, brake master cylinder reservoir. You want to turn this clockwise and as you do it will draw that piston back in. So you want to draw it in until it's pretty much flush and be very careful of this outer boot that you don't break it or mess it up too bad and just push it so that it's um, pretty much all the way in to where as you're turning this you can feel it, it stops turning. So at this stage, make sure that this can move in and out. You're going to want to be able to pull it, you know, and have full travel. If it's bound up and will not move, take out the 12 millimeter bolts, get some grease in here, and, and we'll show you how to disassemble it a little bit. But uh, you want it basically to do this, where it can go in and out. Okay, now, if this does not accordion, is the word we'll use, like go in and out very easy, there's a problem and you need to take the two 12 millimeter uh, bolts out of each side and remove this piece. Now, our problem here was this, one of these was frozen solid, it would not move. These are supposed to move in and out really easy. If it doesn't do that, like what we had to do is put it in a vise and knock it back and forth until it finally came out. Then uh, we took a wire brush, because there's rust all over here that we you know, filed it down real good lubed it up real good and now it's uh, super s smooth and so this is going to go in and out just fine uh, the way that it's intended to. So that's uh, something you, m you may not have a problem with or maybe you will so just keep that in mind. And uh, the problem with that is if these do not go in and out you're not going to be able to get the travel you need to get the new brake pad on. So then you can take your old pads and pull these off with pliers. They pretty much just comes straight off uh, forward wise and then if you want to transfer them over to the new ones so that you have clips as well to help hold these in place. Next you'll take your brake lubricant and this is gonna really help the car not have any squeaks. So you want to put this on the back side just smear it around and it's mainly just needs to go where it's going to be contacting other metal or the uh, piston. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so then just push this down in there. So this little clip right here will lock into place at the top, little archway. So then basically you're taking this little U-shape here, lining it up down in there and compressing it by pushing straight down. As you push down, just push each side into place. So as you can see, that pad just goes right in there that way. Then you're gonna take the next one and do the same thing. Put grease on the back of it. If you wanna use the clips or not, that's somewhat optional. Sometimes these come with new clips, sometimes they don't. These ones didn't come with the new side clips, so um, I'll be all right without them. But anyway, just push straight down to spread that clip out and then just get it in there. Okay, clean the rotor real good because they come with oil on them so they don't rust for storage. <laughs> Plus you have greasy hands like me, so you wanna just clean these up on both sides the best that you can. So next slide the rotor back on. Now with this properly spread, you'll be able to slide this right over the new rotor, no problem. Then just line it up back here, top here. Okay. You want to line this up, put some Loctite on your bolts and then put them back in the top and the bottom. So put some Loctite on your bolt and line it on up and basically just reattach it the way that it came off. There's the top one, just get it somewhat started and lined up, then move to the bottom one. And then just torque them down. So next, just take your brake line, feed it back through here, get it in place, and grab your pliers, and just yank on this cord here, this brake. And just pull it out and wrap it around and in. As you pull on the other side, it'll push that back in. Make sure that you get your clip here and slide it back in, your retainer clip here. And you may need to kind of put it in place and get it up in here with a screwdriver or even some needle nose pliers. There you go. So that's on there good. Okay, so you'll be doing the same thing on the other side, but then the next step uh, is to put the wheel back on. Okay, so you want to lower the car so it just barely touches the ground, enough to hold the wheel in place. Then torque it down to 95 foot pounds or so. Use the star pattern, alternating each lug nut directly across. Go over it twice just for good measure. Okay, now you can pop your center cap back on if you have those wheels. Just line them up. Okay, now something that you really want to note is the fluid level here. Sometimes it will overflow if fluid has been added as the brakes have gotten smaller. If you do note that this is overflowing, you can take one of these, stick it in here, and spray it back into the bottle just to siphon it down a little bit. But note that then when you finally go to pump the brakes, that level might drop and you never want the level to drop low enough that you get air into the system or you'll have to bleed the brakes. Now our level looks like it's pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and put our cap back on the top and then just pump the brakes. They'll be loose at first and then they'll firm up. Keep checking though to make sure that that level hasn't dropped all the way down and uh, then when everything feels firm, uh, do a few brake tech checks with it, backing out, and then uh, 
drive it down the road and go about 20 miles an hour and then come to a stop another 20 miles an hour then come to a stop and that'll uh, start to seat the brakes um, and help them wear on the mating surfaces.